we've got that five eight marker which is bush opposite we're going to try and hit that every time and i think today accuracy is going to be important i always feel, feel that on shallow venues an indication is the bait an indication there didn't you yeah yeah as the bait's falling through the wow. water so Ooh. And, and you know what when Too i was when we, were, when we were talking about braid as a main line yeah that's a massive benefit of braid and that short shocker because we've had it before when we're international fishing we had it in france last year bloodworm was a fantastic bait wasn't it yeah but there was a lot of small fish you know you're getting little indications as the bait falls through the water we all know how delicate blood weight bloodworm is as a bait and I ended up using braid direct, you know, for the for the competition days, for the, the world champ match days, because the skimmers, when you got a bite from a skimmer, it just, you know, proper nodding bite from a skimmer, great. But what you saw with your braid direct is when you cast in, you'd see a little tiny flap if a little small fish had got hold of your bloodworm and, and ruined your presentation and, and bladdered your bloodworm blood hook bait. So it, it meant you were confident to sit there with a bait that was fishing rather than one that was bladdered. So because just because you'd see those little indications. So we've had two see, bites, see, two uh, chucks. Uh, so let me, tell you, let me tell you what, what I get nervous about, Rob, with, see, with what's just happened there to start. And I want to, like I said, I'm not going to give you an inch today. I want to want to grill you. What, what makes me nervous is, you know, if I start like this and I get bite, 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 and I've had five or six bites and I haven't caught a fish. Before I knew it, Rob, I've chucked out a big feeder several times. Do you know what I mean? And, and I've, I've put a lot of bait in the swim. Okay. So my, like my, I my naturally want to start like almost slowing it down a bit, like maybe put a bigger hook bait on or a smaller hook bait or a smaller feeder or. I get that Lee, but you know what? We're very, very early in a session. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And yeah. If I was in a match, match situation now, the bloke next to me would still be feeding his initial 10 feeder fulls. Got it, yeah. Got so it. at least I'm giving myself a chance of coming back with a fish yeah. while I'm baiting my, my, my pegging theory. Yeah. And we can, we can do this and then we can always slow it down. Sometimes I feel that, you know, you know when you slow it down and we talk about stodging your mix up and we talk about smaller feeders or window feeders or yeah. fishing more compact feeders to slow the peg down a little bit yeah. bigger baits you need fish there in the first place to be able to do that and we need to be able to attract fish into the swim first and then start thinking about slowing it down so if you're wrong we've had we've had two indications granted two fast bites but who's to say now we might go 10 minutes without an indication uh, and we might need to yeah, try a few different things yeah, yeah. That's what's on. That's what's on my mind. So obviously I'm. It's a little tiny liner then. Was there? Yeah, right. yeah. This, this, you know, I've got a really fine tip in Lee. This is. Um, yeah, talk to me about your tip. This is a mega top. I mean, the guys it's at the, home. It's a three quarter ounce away. tip, but it's a very fine, soft three quarter ounce. You know, you get some that are, that are, it says three quarter ounce on it, and it. And a bit it, stiff. You, yeah, yeah, a bit yeah. stiff. This is a really soft three quarter ounce tip, and you can see today. It's absolutely flat calm. It's beautiful conditions for, for reading your tip. And I think the softer the tip, the better. Especially yeah. with, again, this is a very direct setup with, with braid almost direct. I want a bit of give in that tip. I don't want it poker stiff. Otherwise, once again, those small fish, they're going to be able to rattle themselves off against the tip. Yeah, so you basically put the lightest tip possible in your rod, haven't you? Exactly, yes. Yeah. Yeah, and what, so what are you, when you're reading the tip, what, what sort of bites you're looking for? I mean, obviously, without blocking the view of the tip for the guys, what, what, you know, what sort of bites are you, are you looking for little, t little tiny touches? I'm looking, looking for, for a, a repetition on the tip in theory, or something that's obviously looks like it's gonna drag my rod in. So if yeah. I, I'll tell you what, I'll grab the line in front yeah, and just, we can see, hopefully guys, see the Just tip. make sure you're not blocking the So, so what I'm looking see. for is if I get a sharp jag like that, yeah. I'm not picking up. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's a fish either knocking the feeder or he, he probably has picked up the hook bait, felt resistance really fast and he's dropped the bait. Yeah, you're never hitting you know, that bite, are you? I'm never hitting that bite. What I'm looking for is something that's a little bit more yeah, that repetitive. Repetitive, as, yeah, as yeah. A, a fish nods its head, that's yeah. what I'm looking for. Yeah, so yeah, So a fish yeah. nodding its head and then yeah, obviously moving, moving around. away. I mean, the big pull rounds are self-explanatory, aren't and, they? And, but... and you know what, if we get something that goes like that and toes off, 
it's a decent fish and he's probably hooked himself against the against the tip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have one little indication on that cast. So you can see it's not, I know what you're saying, it's it's not a case of getting millions of uh, indications on the tip. No, no, that's fine that time because you only had one little indication and you've you've left it in a bit. I'm just nervous, Rob. That, that was a three minute like cast because I was very wary about Obviously, we had indications fast last time. Yeah. So that was a three-minute cast. I do. I, do, I would. You know. Just slow it back down, maybe this time, can't you? Yeah, do you know what I mean? I'm, you know, we are talking about early on in the session, and I do mm. want to put some bait in, but it's getting that balance between putting some bait in and maybe coming back with a with a fish. Yeah. This is probably how I'd start my session. You know, in. Uh, you know, a lot of places like Ireland. You know, I, you know, I wouldn't. If I was fishing in Ireland, Tamar. fishing for a, anywhere where I was looking yeah. for a mixed bag of Tamar fish. Dam, those so sorts of places. Little yeah. indication again, just as the bait's falling. Which, like you say, is a benefit of your braid. Yeah. So, what are you doing right now? T tell us what you're doing I'm exactly. Just trying to, without sink, without moving my feet, I'm trying to sink the line sort of as fast as possible. So which, you're watching the line on the surface, and just I'm watching the line on the surface. And I'm I'm trying to get my braid under the water surface as fast as I can by pulling my rod gently back. So I end the cast with my rod almost pointing at the feeder. Yeah. And then I can take up the slack nice and slowly. And then we can get it, get it, pull it back to our position so on the rest. So you're happy that your line is, is pretty straight to your feeder The line now. is really direct to the feeder, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But what I don't want to be doing is moving the feeder once it's on the bottom. You see, no. you know, obviously we know how important that is when we're method feeder fishing not to move the feeder. But yeah. I think the falling hook bait yeah. and the falling feeder, here we go. That was a nicer bite. Yeah, yeah. That sort was of a bite. nicer bite. Um, that's what's good. That's what's hopefully going to get you your bites. That fall, that fall of the bait. So I want, I want, I don't want it to go to the bottom and then skip along the bottom. I don't think that's going to be. It's just popped off. Oh. I, I tell you what, Lee, Lee. I'd be on for a first fish of the day there. I, I'd love to be using a barbed hook, wouldn't you? Oh, I'd love to be using a barbed hook. But, yeah. but you know, that's that's the nature of the yeah, day. Yeah, so. you're going to get, an, you're going to get an odd one I drop am. off. You're going to get an odd one drop off. That was near. I thought. I thought. Wow, you've concluded that first part beautifully, Rob. With a, with a. I don't know what it was, but no, what I it, don't know what it was. Skimmery or? Yeah, I, I don't know. It was a small skimmer or roach. I'm guessing. I, Lee, I don't. I haven't got a clue what we could be catching. No, so no, I, no. You know, uh, just had. Um, just before the cameras got here, we were talking about hybrids and, you know, fish like that turning up. So. Could be anything, mate. We could catch anything. Yeah, yeah. I've not done anything. anything with my ground bait yet. I've not dampened it up. I've not done anything with it. It's no, just no a case tricks. of no tricks. To nothing. Share, have you? No, no. We're not. We're not. We're keeping all our cards ready for later in the session. So again, we're just going to pull that. Pull that braid nice and tight. We're sort of like putting as much pressure on on the feeder as we can without moving it along the bottom. Yeah. So we, if a fix if a fish picks it up now, you're relying on a, almost like a bolt rig effect to hook yeah, itself. Yeah, of course. I, I mean, if I was thinking that this was always this was always going to be about fishing very very fast, we'd probably have less tension on the tip if we were fishing for roach. We probably wouldn't be even thinking about getting it on the rod rest, but. As it is, especially early on, where we're just seeing what how the day's going to pan out. I think it's nice just to get your rod on your rest and almost like relax into the day. And also, what it does is it, it just just gives you, if you're not obviously I'm, I'm concentrating on my tip, but you know if in a match situation, just gives me a bit more relaxed feeling. I can look around, see what mm. everyone else is doing. Gotta remember, this is a brand brand new venue for me. Yeah, I've got to, I've got to find out as much as I can, as quickly as I can, about about what's going to happen it, during it, the day. Well, even if it isn't a brand new venue, you should be doing that anyway. You yeah, should be of course, paying yeah. attention yeah. to the day as yeah. much as possible, see what's going on. You know, I mean, what would you say then, Lee? Is, is going to be my target weight today? Listen, if I think I, I think if you could get to fifteen pound, I would I would say that's fantastic. Is but, it right? Okay. But but the time of year, Rob. 
It's a funny time of year. It's from about now, which is why I said I wanted to come and do this today. Because it's any from about now as we come into June, this is when the, the small fish start to wake up in numbers. I, I, you know, Ferry Meadow is one of my our favourite places to go. You go there fishing April, May, you never even catch a fish apart from a flipping five pound plus bream. No. And then all of a sudden, you get into June and we're getting like consistent 20 degree days. You're getting little hybrids, roach. You talk to me why that is. Is that is that because the, the, the fish got to spawn? I, mean, or I, don't, know, I don't know exactly. I, I know I know from fishing this venue, there's a lot of roach, but I also know that this time of year, they barely catch any. So, you know, you're going to have to read the day and you're going to have to find out what's going on. But in, you could come back here in two weeks' time after this video's out and you're... You could be catching more roach. So this is my whole point about reading the venue and and seeing. I, I I love the story about last year's feeder masters. On the on the Friday practice match, there was thirty pound bags of roach caught. Right, mm. I caught. I remember having a little go for them and catching fifty in an hour. Thinking, well, at least I've got some roach to go at. The next day started the match for roach. I think I caught about eight in an hour, and I was winning. There was the so few roach to catch after being so many the day before, which is what I'm on about, about every time you go fishing, you've got to keep your eyes peeled and read what's happening. You know, because it's the difference between targeting, of, you know, you've just said, what's your target? I'm saying about 15 pound, but hang on, it could be 25, it could be yeah. eight pound. And it could be roach, it could be skimmers. I don't know what it's going yeah. to be. So, so how you've started for me is like it's like the ultimate safe approach to start definitely. we have our feeder master super league on carmill dam yeah we have one on southfield yeah we, even on the commercials rob oh. when we fish like laughing than that yeah is it a skimmer day is it there we go double maggot it's not a very big fish this isn't me yeah but you're off the mark rob you, you, well i hope so we might get him in this time you've had six casts of of bait so your your peg's not bait free is it no you know see that was you know just over three minutes that bite do we net him lee what do we think i'll say first fish of the day gets netted rob yeah, it's a little skimmer look beautiful <laughs> very it's nice. a little skimmer a little hand size skimmer not you know, I'm hoping for big. I tell you what, he just fell off. If we'd have, if we'd have swung him, yeah. swung him in. Just show the guys, show the guys. So that, I'm hoping we catch bigger fish than that. Yeah, I'll, of course, you know. yeah, but that's your first fish today. Get more to the side, Rob, so the guys can see it on the camera. That is sort of the fish we're after. So it's not going to be a sack up day, is it? Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, look, it's a great start. You're gonna, I know you're going to do this probably for nearly the first hour. So I'm going to, let, let's let you get settled in, maybe get a little bit of fishing under your belt, and then I want a bit of a reflection on how we are after an hour. Mm -hmm. 